Emily in Paris. I binged it. Did you binge it? <laughs> Welcome back. I'm Nikki and today we're breaking it down talking all about Emily in Paris. So Emily in Paris hit Netflix October 2nd and you know I binged that entire thing this, <laughs> the exact same day it came out. I was, as you know from my last video, the reaction trailer, the trailer reaction, um, I was just really excited for this series. I wanted something a little more upbeat in this very dark 2020 year. So I was just excited. I did have some concerns that I was hoping the show wouldn't go in that direction, but we're gonna break it all down today. So to get us started, um, like I said, I did watch it all in one night, which isn't really hard to do. It wasn't like a big commitment. The episodes are 30 minutes. I think there's 10 of them. Super easy to kind of just knock it out on a Friday night. That said, I binged it, but none of the episodes really had, I think, any cliffhangers to make you watch the next episode, at least not for me. Um, I watched it because I wanted to see what happened with the story, but it wasn't like one of those intense, someone disappears and what's gonna happen in the next episode? It kind of just was very enjoyable, nothing extreme that would make you like have to watch the next episode, but it was still enjoyable and I did binge it, so they did something right there. I also noticed in the basically in the first two episodes right away that the quality was great. Um, I feel like that's something you usually notice right off the bat whether or not they put money into it and time into it or if it's just like how fast can we make something. So this definitely had a budget. It looked great. It was shot in Paris from what I understand entirely in Paris which is why it's just so beautiful and honestly like just seeing it makes me want to go back to Paris that bad. I feel like they did a great job of capturing the city, kind of the vibe, the culture. It was really great. Major props to them for that and I want to say major props to Netflix but I think the series from what I understand again it was kind of tricky to find too much information on this but from what I understand Netflix is where this series was distributed but it was actually made by the Paramount Network or C CBS, whoever owns Paramount, um, which is kind of kind of an interesting twist, mostly because 2020, obviously they didn't have normal distribution, I think in the way that they wanted and they knew people were on streaming apps like Netflix. So kind of makes sense why they did it, but also really interesting that I feel like this could have been a Netflix show and I'm curious why Netflix didn't do something similar. I feel like all of their stuff has been a little a little below the bar of quality <laughs> and really just going for quantity right now. So when the series starts out, I will say, while well, I love the locations and I love the look of Paris, I was let down by Lily Collins' performance. There was just something really inauthentic about it. I think she was cheesy or like overacting. You know when someone's like trying to be cute or like trying to be quirky and like, oh, I'm different. Like, <laughs> I feel like I got that from Lily Collins' character. Um, and at the beginning, I thought maybe the entire series was going to be that same type of, I'm trying to be a thing, but I'm not really in tune with my character and it's not really meshing well. Thankfully, it gets better. I will say if you've only seen the first few episodes, know that it improves. I don't know if it's just like her getting into her character or if it's just the fact that beginnings are always awkward because you have to like, I don't know, you're kind of adjusting to the story as a viewer. So then some things can just be off-putting even though maybe they wouldn't have been if you, you know what I mean? It's kind of just weird to start out and be like, this is the world, this is this person, like this person. So I will, I just wanted to call that out. I thought it was really cheesy at the beginning. I didn't love her, but it gets better. So kind of along those lines, things get better with her character and her acting. I don't know if that was just an acting choice to be a certain way at the beginning and then again improve. But I also felt like the story got a little more, I don't, a little more complex. At the beginning, it felt really uh, superficial, kind of like a cheesy storyline, like you would see in maybe, I don't know, like a made for TV movie. And then it felt a little more authentic. And I don't think all shows have to start out on that superficial cheesy level and end up there. Um, but this one definitely did. It was kind of like blah. And then we see her kind of go into her day to day and the story get a little more complex. I mean, I'm using complex very loosely because the show is still very like upbeat. And I feel like fitting for the younger 
a TV show or like a Sex in the City. It doesn't get too dark for the most part. So again, so as it gets better, the story is more interesting, more complex, a lot of fun twists and turns. I don't want to give anything away too much. I'm going to try and keep this spoiler free. Um, but it really gets, again, more engaging. In my trailer reaction, I, <laughs> I know I told you guys, I'm like, please don't let this be about a boy, like just a boy. Um, we saw that like cute guy in the trailer teasing him. And he's in there. Again, no spoilers. Obviously, he's in there. But I just don't think the story is really about him. It is about, you know, Emily in Paris and kind of what she's doing there. And I think there's other... I'm trying not to give it away while also discussing it. There's other love interests. And I think that helps it be not just about the one guy in the trailer. Um, so I was appreciative of that. I think they could have pulled back a little more and just not made it about boys in general. But... um it's fine. It's, <laughs> it was made from the creators of Sex and the City. Like, what did we expect? It was going to be definitely love and drama in there. And then <laughs> in, my, in my reaction video, my trailer reaction, I was super excited for the fashion. In the trailer, I don't know what it was, but the outfit seemed so cute and fun. Maybe it's because you have like that music playing and it's just like flashing the different scenes of her outfits. But when it actually came to the series, I didn't like her clothes. Let me know if you feel differently. I mean, I really liked a couple of outfits. Um, there was a yellow dress. I thought it was really beautiful. There was like a, a plain, simple black dress that she wears to a party. That was really beautiful. But everything else felt really, again, almost like trying too hard to make her trendy. And I know that's kind of her character. She's trying to get her bearings in Paris, but I just wanted more cute clothing. And a lot of the other characters did have cute ensemble so I appreciated that I just wish our main character had like either shifted really fast into being like Parisian chic but she didn't it was so American and I get what they were trying to do but I wish her outfits had been cuter let me know if you feel differently and let me know if you like one of her outfits that I didn't mention but I'm the biggest fan of again the black dress she has two of them in the show there's two black dresses and then the yellow one I think you know what I'm talking about I'm not trying to give too much away so people can be surprised with the outfits but let me know if those outfits stood out to you and what you thought of the, the rest of her closet. Got my notes here. Want to make sure I don't miss anything. I do want to call out, I know we chatted about boys, but I feel like her love interest throughout the series, not giving too much away, felt awkward, felt like, really? We're gonna, we're gonna say that they're a thing? I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in general about her love interest throughout the show. It felt like major mismatch to me and maybe that's again what they're trying to emphasize because she's in a new place trying to find her groove like who is the right type of guy for her and that sort of thing but let me know your thoughts in the comments on that because i was disappointed there's one especially and i can't give it away but there is one guy where i just ooh, what why why there is no way they would ever be a couple what is this what <laughs> Oh, it irks me. I think he's so gross, especially he's so gross for her. I'm sure he's great as a person. This is <laughs> not trying to sound judgy. I just think for her character in the show, it's kind of gross. Okay, so overall, I would rate this series a 7 out of 10. That's a solid C. And I think it's because it was still entertaining and enjoyable to watch. I liked it. Binging it was fun. Once it was over, it was kind of sad because I could have binged 10 more. So it was solid, a great show. It definitely didn't change my life. I don't know if you guys have seen Anna Kendrick's Love Live series. I think it's HBO Max. Oh my God, I feel like it impacted me so much and honestly just taught me a lot about life and perspective and those types of things. This, Emily in Paris, is not that show. <laughs> it's a fun, kind of enjoyable, a little bit of drama to keep you watching, but it's not anything that's going to change your life. It's a solid show. It's fun. And I love shows like that. I think the reason it's not a 10, you know, like from the from 7 to 10, I think what's missing in that gap, I would say is, again, the acting at the beginning. I don't know why it started off so weak with Lily Collins, but I just wasn't jiving with her. And then I feel like, again, the story... It got better, but I feel like they could have gone a little bit deeper. Now, this doesn't mean they had to make it super dramatic or sad, but I think they could have gone deeper on the topics that they did touch on and kind of make it more like Sex in the City, where it really, it really felt like there were some life lessons or some love lessons in there without being overly 
dark and serious. I mean, there's some serious Sex in the City episodes, but you know what I mean? So I feel like that's what was missing for it being at a seven and what it needed to be at a 10. I feel like I needed a stronger performance from Lily Collins. I needed the story to just go a little bit deeper. And then I'm trying to think what else. It's so hard because I was in love with the locations. I was, I was in love with the general feel of it. It just wasn't hitting on those points for me. And it felt like almost having your favorite dish at a restaurant. You know what I mean? Like it's familiar. It's so good, but uh, <laughs> so it was almost there. That's, that's the best way I can explain it. That said, I do recommend that you watch it. Emily in Paris is cute. It's fun. It's happy. I will be watching for a season two if they make one. It hasn't been officially announced yet. I think mostly because it was shot in Paris and obviously with everything going on, I don't know that they can go back and shoot in Paris. Um, I would watch for a second season. I would love to see it get a little more, again, in depth on some of the topics they want to discuss on there. Um, what else? I'm just trying to think about everything that hit my mind review my notes and see if there's anything else. I think we had everything. Again, it was fun to watch it. It was cute. I want to know your thoughts. Let me know of all the things we talked about. Let me know what you thought of her outfits, what you thought of her acting at the beginning, and then what you would rate this show out of 10. I gave it a seven <laughs> for my reasons, but did, how much did you enjoy it? Because sometimes I think regardless of all the things that supposed to do. If you loved it, then you loved it. So let me know in the comments. I want to hear your thoughts. I'll be back very soon with another video. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that like button. And I'll catch you in the next video.